Hello everyone, and welcome to a very special episode of Vintage Bolton. But today I'm going to be reviewing and giving a brief history about my favorite vintage speaker, Coral Speakers. Now I thought I would do this because of the response that I've been getting to my open baffle builds has far exceeded my expectations. So I thought, why not shine a little bit of light on this very special speaker company. I am by no means an expert, and I thought that this could be an open forum for anyone who knows anything about this speaker company, your experiences with these speakers. Uh, like and, and comment below, I'd love to hear more. I could, in future, I could do an updated episode with all the information we get, because it's like so many hi-fi companies out there over the years, especially through the 70s and 80s, there were a lot of special small companies and they just went under or they disappeared or they were bought over and we never really heard of them again, which is a shame because they made high quality hi-fi equipment. So who or what are Coral Speakers? Well, they are a speaker company from Tokyo, Japan. But before they were called Coral Speakers, they were called the Fukuyu Sound Company. And you can still see this in some of the branding on the back of these drivers. Now it was this brand, the Fukuyu Sound Company, that manufactured and distributed this Coral brand of speakers. And this was from the late 50s to the early 60s before changing its name to the Coral Audio Corporation sometime in the 60s. And that is the company that became synonymous with making high quality speakers and speaker drivers. Sadly, they seem to have been bought over by the Mitsubishi Corporation sometime in the 80s. And this line of Coral speakers was never really seen again or manufactured or distributed. Well, they made literally all types, by and large, Coral were most famous for their full range drivers. The most famous of them being the beta range. The Coral Beta 6, 8 and 10 inches. And these are still highly sought after today and probably command the highest prices of all Coral speakers. I haven't had the good fortune of coming across them yet, but I have the Coral Flat 8 right here. And by all accounts, this is very similar to the beta range. The beta range being the next level up but the Coral Flat 6, 8 and 10 range are no slouches. Exceptional dual cone 4 range drivers. Over to the middle here, you can see this dazzling triaxle speaker, the 12TX1. This would have been one of their flagship speakers when they were still called the Fuku Sound Company. They made a whole bunch of different coaxials, triaxles, and as you can see from this brochure, which is the most complete brochure I've ever found, they really did make so many different drivers. So these triaxles, tri, have three in one drivers. They have the larger bass driver, the mid cone driver, and the tweeter driver, all mounted in the same center position. Whereas a coaxial, like these 8CX50s, are a dual driver two drivers mounted in the center. So being all these full range drivers, they are meant to cover all the frequencies from the low frequencies to the high frequencies in one driver. For a lot of you out there, at first introduction to Coral Speakers may have been one of their kit speakers. They had quite a number of different kit speakers, but the most popular seems to be the Coral SA range. And this here is the Coral 12 SA1, three-way, four-driver speaker with a 12-inch woofer, a mid-range driver, and two tweeters. The 12 SA seemed to be the most popular. So Coral would have distributed this kit all over the world. They would have sent out the drivers and the components for the crossovers with the instructions for the cabinet design, and then local hi-fi companies, wherever they were, would finish the construction, make the cabinets, install the drivers and the crossovers 
and then sell them. It was a great way for consumers to step up to a better speaker without breaking the bank because they were high quality drivers, high quality design, but a lot of the costs were eliminated because coal didn't have to export big, large cabinets. Timber was cheap back then. Local manufacturers could knock them up in no time. Now, a huge part of Coral's business seems to have been making drivers for other OEM companies. So what does that mean? It means that they were making drivers that were rebranded by other companies to put into their products. And this here coined the Coral Holy Basket was often found in Sony's Valve reel-to-reel -reel players. And I got mine from the Sony TC500A tape recorder. And you can check out that video in my channel also. And some have called this driver the greatest 3.5 inch full range driver ever. But as you can see, it is branded Sony, but is in fact by Coral Speakers. And the correct model name for it would have been the FE103A, which has been imitated by a number of manufacturers since, such as Fostex. They also made their fair share of Kabuki speakers. What do I mean by Kabuki speakers? Well, in Japan, Kabuki is a classical form of theater, like the opera, and it's very showy, very extravagant, beautiful costumes, beautiful makeup, very out there, very garish. They were meant to look more flashy than, than sounding good because this is what uh, was attracting people from the Western markets at the time. So what characteristics do coral speakers exhibit? Almost all coral speakers and drivers exhibit beautiful mid-range. Some of the best I've ever heard. It's emotional, it's punchy, and the clarity is, is generally off the charts. Being vintage drivers, they're not gonna have the same parameters that they did in the 70s or the 60s, but they well and truly still hold their own. Generally find that almost all of Coral's drivers are paper cones with some sort of cloth surround, and this makes them very sensitive drivers. The triaxles are somewhere around the 9700 dB, one watt at one meter. My flat eights are about 95. One of the glaring drawbacks of full range drivers is that they don't really get enough bass and they often are described as sounding shouty and harsh in that upper mid range frequency, especially around that five to six kilohertz frequency range. There's a few good websites out there that really describe these characteristics and detail some, some workarounds. A lot of people might put in a notch filter to bring down that hump in that five to six kilohertz range or wherever it might be. I'm not one to measure speakers myself, measure the frequency range. I tend to go by my ear and how that speaker makes me feel, but I'll definitely look at other people's measurements online and look at the, the measurements that the, the company itself published. And again, those wouldn't be accurate these days because the parameters especially of the magnets, would have changed by now. And when I first got the, the flat driver, I definitely experienced this shoutiness, almost like a distortion, like a shrillness in that upper mid-range top end sort of area. It was still in its original box, and the box actually came with a filter that filtered that out, but it wasn't making much of a difference. As soon as I took these drivers out of the box, and did some modifications to dampen the basket, the frame, which I've detailed in another video. And I put them in these open baffles. That shoutiness was gone. I'm not joking, it was really gone. And it became the most emotional, dreamy driver I've ever heard. But of course, being in an open baffle and being a full range driver, I was very conscious that I was not gonna get the bass response that I was after. So what I did was, I took the base driver out of here, out of this kit, and put it in the, the open baffle. I, I was keeping my expectations low for base. It's certainly not going to shake the neighborhood, but I'm not a fan of overwhelming base anyway, so I was pleasantly surprised at how good it was. It was tight, inviting, got my feet tapping, 
The one thing that I've learned for myself over the years with my love of full range drivers is that I hate any sort of components in front of those drivers. The moment I try and put a filter, any sort of filter or crossover components in front of that full range driver, it loses its magic. So all I have on this is an inductor on the woofer blocking out some of those higher frequencies, but nothing, no components in front of this one. And it's beautiful. I can sit there and listen to just about any style of music from jazz to rock and roll to hip hop and dance. In fact, I think some of the modern pop dance, modern jazz music sounds best on these vintage full range speakers. You could definitely say that some of that distorted rock and roll wouldn't play so well on these. Still sounds great. But yeah, when, you're, when you've got a lot of distortion in the recordings and the music, it, definitely, it can definitely come through on these speakers. But in contrast to and comparison to the triaxles, I had a completely different experience. I probably couldn't have been more disappointed with the triaxles. I guess I don't have a whole lot of experience with these sorts of triaxles, coaxials, PA drivers, but I couldn't help it. They just made me feel cold. The clarity and detail was incredible on them. It wasn't very warm and inviting. I didn't get that same disappointed feeling with the eight inch coaxials. They were really beautiful. Not as warm as the eight inch full ranges, the, the, the coral flat, but they had probably one of the smoothest responses I'd ever heard, the flattest frequency response I've heard out of all of these so far. And that was still when I, they were in their original boxes, these little sort of oversized bookshelf boxes. The holy baskets though, by and far, next to the flat eights, my favorite drivers ever. The most emotional, dreamy, warm driver I've ever experienced. I don't know how you can get such a sound out of a 3.5 inch driver. It's such a big sound for such a small driver. There is absolutely no shoutiness in them whatsoever, no shrillness. Obviously, you're not gonna get big bass. I'm gonna make the best open baffle I can for them. I'm gonna pair them up with these woofers and that will become my number one speaker. But if it's your first introduction to coral speakers and you've spied off one of these kits online, already pre-made with either the 10 inch or the 12 inch bass driver, these kits were the first speakers that I got ever got from Coral. And probably like a lot of people, I spied them online on the secondhand market. So I was like, oh, what are those? And this is when I was still, you know, a neophyte, an amateur, hi-fi enthusiast. And I was coming from those brand new Alan Jones design speakers from, from Pioneer, which were a bargain in themselves. And the first ones I got were the smaller, were the baby brothers of these, with the 10 inch woofer. The boxes were destroyed, they were, the chipboard was cracking and warped. And I put them on and I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Where is this mid-range magic coming from that I've never heard before? And all of those new speakers that I kept buying. So I guess that brings me to my last point. Are they a vintage bargain? You bet. Obviously, like I said before, if you're searching for those coral beaters, people generally know what they've got on their hands and the prices are large. But in comparison, I call coral speakers the, the Tanois or the Lauther or the Altex of Japan. Are they as good as the Tanois or the Altex? Well, that's gonna be subjective. I don't quite think so, but in comparison, you are getting a bargain. You'll find these kits, especially these unbranded <coughs> kits. I was lucky to get a coral badge on mine, but a lot of these come unbranded. You'll pick them up for $50 free sometimes, maybe $200 max. And that would be a, a huge step up if you're just getting into hi-fi, especially bargain vintage hi-fi. You will get many years of love out of them. And you can replace the capacitors, but I managed to get my flat eights for $200, the eight inch coaxials, $50. 
especially if they've been rebranded under another company. A lot of the time, people won't know exactly what they are or what they have. The Holy Basket, people are always throwing out those tape recorders. So you can quite often pick them up from salvage yards like I did. So my advice is if you see some lying around for a bargain, or even if you can stretch your budget a little bit, snap them up. So I hope this review and brief history of coral speakers has been interesting. If it is, subscribe and like. And if you know more about them, if you, you've had experience with them, please comment below. I love to hear from people. Um, there's a couple of links below to other people's websites so they detail their experiences with them. And don't forget to look out for my new build which is coming soon, featuring the 3.5 inch Holy Basket drivers. Bye for now.